she concerns um, a couple of items that y'all have discussed. One is an adult drug court. We have a map there that is indicating those counties that uh, are served by adult felon and drug court. Um, and those are marked in blue, the areas in white offices do not have those high courts, and those in pink uh, are served by felony as well as the misdemeanor court. Uh, this Commissioner Evans and uh, former Commissioner Lane has looked into the idea of this, and that is what gave birth to the ankle mark uh, You also have the next page map indicating those counties that have the Y court. You see those are generally in the metro area. You have some bullet delivery challenge. And then you have the juvenile court court. You can see those that are And the last is a map indicating those can be certified in the mental health court. Um, I, I believe that if approached, our judges would probably be perhaps receptive to some type of program to address certain of this adult and health issues. Um, it depends on your interpretation as to the need for that. I just believe there's some reason that they would be receptive to it. But then, in the application of funds to do that. If y'all call, then uh, we have looked into the uh, drug court. We were kind of led to believe by the judges that that was not something that they were strong supporters of because of the complexity that it related to their experience. And dealing with capital more than uh, determining the sentence. So how that would fit in with the, the mental health court, I can't really tell you. I don't, I don't know. Could we get some, uh, <clears throat> if, if let's just, if we're just looking at the adult mental health court, uh, we've got a couple of counties that's has close proximity to land off of the road. Could we, could we do some research and look at those counties and see what their expenditures and that information is and what they're spending on that for the uh And uh, not to kind of have so much to offer, and I just, I, I just hate to see this just not the 
don't look at anything that's going to happen. We have what, almost 2,000 folks going through the system per month. So the juvenile on about 2,000 folks. Would Ms. Evans, though, would uh, are we talking about sentencing guidelines or just the fact that we're really getting a court system in the Well, the drug court system, wow. I think we have had training. This young lady came down from Fitzgerald when it came before the Green Cross and let me sit down and talk. There's a lot of people who are going to go through. But we look at the drug uh, day camp, which more or less just provide training for them to get back in the system and off of the system. It's something that the governor has a million dollars that was a real for that system and how to take these. So we do anything to look at these that revenue. But that's basically a, a sentencing mechanism. <coughs> The court, if they come through there, the judge is sentencing that particular individual to this day camp, to this counseling, to this whatever. Right. So, what are the, are there, I guess maybe where, where I'm trying to get to is that through state court now, where most all this comes through, are we looking at a situation where their hands are virtually tied, tied as far as the sentencing guidelines? Or is this something that we could encourage them more rather than do the jail time and incarceration, which is going to add to state and county um, uh, jail uh, issues? Could we not, is there some encouragement there that possibly there would be some flexibility on the sentencing guidelines to sentence them to the council? I, I, I think he can, uh, he or she is the judge. Sentencing to that if that facility exists. And one of the concerns is that that facility would be something more than a uh, court study hall. I mean, well, you know, that's what you know. We're not really talking, we call it a adult drug court. We're not talking about a court system. We're talking about a counseling but, system. But the court, that's what, yes, mm -hmm. to answer your question, the court would sentence that individual to this program as opposed to incarcerated. Right. Okay. So, so they, would, they would go every day, they would get counseling every day, they would get encouragement every day of how to... So we don't have, are you telling me then there's no, we don't have any kind of drug intervention, drug type? There was a program that, uh, if I recall, that uh, state funded that was in Thomasville. And so we were looking at the possibility of how we might could obtain those funds. And then if you did, where would you locate? Well, the old school out at Pine Well, then the comment was, wait a minute, those individuals that are going to be impacted with this are not going to be able to get out there inside of too far out, the, the residents in that area are not going to burn it there, so, you know, is that a good use of that mm -hmm. problem? Um, but the state picked certain areas, and Thomasville was the area down here, we were not. And what I was told was, it's a great idea, and, and we think y'all should do it. By the way, it's on your time, you're not going to give me money. So, again, okay, and, and I'm just I'm trying to help get through this thing, but we now have, I know in Lambs County, I mean, if, if you have a DUI, you can be, you can, part of your sentencing would be to, to attend DUI school, which we have schools that provides that service for those individuals as, as a private business doing it. Then if you create a situation, are they are they are there agencies, uh, private private agencies, private groups out there that you would be able to send a drug offender to to get this counseling, to get this rather than incarcerating, you tell them they have to go to drug training, and this drug training, let's just say it's at Greenleaf, or whatever it's called now, I'm not sure, but that's where you go. You know, you go there to get this stuff. And you have 
Yeah. 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 I recall what Christian Evans was talking about at ACCG. ACCG class, they, they asked us to uh, so encourage our commissions, local commissions, to uh, ask the judges about alternative sentencing mm -hmm. options. And that's, that's how they turn it. Um, and they asked us to look out for little um, organizations that provide training. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking, personally, in house, we had to know that, but I don't know how to expand uh, or could it handle the magnitude of what we're kind of talking about. I know at one time, they said they used to, um, the judge used to sentence to you uh, 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 to some type of counseling. Yeah, go back or anybody. Like and uh, look at that's how it was given birth. The judges uh, and the legal community came together to help form it. Now, it is funded by fees that are, uh, as we looked at yesterday, that are attached to drug related products. Those numbers have dropped off the table. And the funding for those continue. Each, even though you say, well, there's more crime, that, I'm not arguing that. I'm just saying fees collected are less for whatever reason. So, yes, low that could do it, perhaps, but it would not be able to do it with the current resources. Well, and the reason those fees are less, based on what we got in terms of the court system and probation, is that <clears throat> with a point so low and common so bad, you have higher number of offensive offenses because you've got more theft and all that going on. But then whenever people are sentenced, and they're put on probation for much longer. So the bottom of court districts that you used to collect over 18, 24 months, now you're not collecting until three to five years. Because the judges will, they fill out a financial affidavit saying kind of what they can pay, then their probation money will back into however long it's probably going to be um, to pay all that um, final work and check. And then, in that time, longer goes, people misreporting their probation officer, then they violated their probation, then they're back in court. Over $20. Yeah, back in jail over a $20 payment that they didn't make. And we were paying for the last day after two or three weeks until we got paid. At $40. So it's a revolving door because probation had to be extended. Well, my concern is to look into it and see what we can do about it. It's nothing. I always get with the issues with college, work, cutting down, and we'll get out and see what we can do to better balance it. I'll be able to answer Anything else that we can tell you about? Next, uh, the next item relates to appointments. You have.